In the last video, we introduced solving one-step equations, and we talked about the addition property of equality and adding something to both sides of an equation to get x by itself. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of solving one-step equations, and we are going to look at another very important property. So let's clear the way and bring this in. Now this property is a lot like the addition property of equality, except it's called the multiplication property of equality. It says if a equals b, then a times c will equal b times c. It's the same concept. If you have two sides of an equal sign and the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, then you can multiply both sides by whatever number you want. In this case, we're calling it c and you will still have two things that are equal to each other. So the addition property of equality says you can add something to both sides of an equation, and the multiplication property of equality says you can multiply something on both sides of an equation. Let's look at an example of when we'd have to use the multiplication property of equality. Let's say I have something like, let's do an easy one that you could figure out in your head. 2x equals 8. In other words, 2 times what equals 8? Probably most of you, the answer just popped right in your head is 4. We know the solution is 4. And as I stated in the last video, we have to learn these techniques on easier equations so that we can be able to apply them to equations that are more difficult. So even if it just popped in your head, you still need to learn this technique because we're going to be doing one real quick here where it's not going to pop in your head. You're going to have to use this multiplication property of equality to figure it out. Now in the last video we talked about the addition property of equality. Let's look at this here. Our goal is the same, to get x by itself on one side of the equal sign. So in this equation, let's look at the left hand side. We have a 2x and the right hand side we have an 8. The goal is to get x by itself, so we need to get rid of this 2. In the last problems, we were adding and, and uh, adding positives and negatives to both sides. So some of you might be saying, well, let's add a negative 2 over here, and that'll get rid of this 2. But we have a problem. Hopefully you're seeing the problem. This negative 2 and this 2 are not going to be able to make 0 because this 2 is times the x. These are not like terms. I can't combine the negative 2 and the 2x because of the 2x has an x on it. And you can't combine a term with an x with a term that doesn't have an x. So adding 2 to both sides is not going to get rid of this 2. Sorry. Got to get rid of that. Well, let's see. Let's try the multiplication property of equality. Is there something we could multiply on both sides, or some, let's focus on the left, is there something we could multiply that would get rid of this 2? In other words, would cancel that 2? It's a little bit tricky. Maybe some of you have it. The answer is 1 half. If we multiply on the left-hand side by 1 half, these 2's are going to cancel. And so I will just be left with x on the left-hand side, 1x, 1 times x, which is just x, which is exactly what I want. Well, since I multiplied by 1 half on the left-hand side, I have to multiply by 1 half on the right-hand side. Some people are a little intimidated by multiplying by fractions. But remember, multiplying by half is just the same as dividing by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 8 times a half is 4. Half of 8 is 4. It's really all the same thing. And we know that was the answer because we know 2 times uh, x. 2 times 4 equals 8. All right, let's try another one. Um, actually, before we try another one, let me show you a little bit of a variation on the multiplication property of equality. As I just said, Multiplying by 1 half is the same as dividing by 2. So what you could do on this, and what a lot of people like to do, instead of multiplying by a half, they just divide both sides by 2. And that accomplishes the same thing. The 2's will cancel on the left-hand side, and we're left with x equals 4. So you could do that as well. And you'll probably see me do more of that, but it's good to get used to multiplying with the uh, fractions. The big thing here is to be able to distinguish when do I use the addition property of equality and when do I use the multiplication property of equality. 
So to really highlight that, let me put a couple equations up here, and we'll talk about that. So let's say I have something like 15 equals 3 times x, or fifth, and a second equation, 15 equals 3 plus x. One of these I have to use the multiplication property of equality, and another one I have to use the addition property of equality. In both these equations, I have to get x by itself, and in both these equations, the x's are on the right-hand side, and in both these equations, I have to get rid of a 3. In the first equation, I have to get rid of a 3 that's being multiplied by an x. In the second equation, I have to get rid of a 3 that's being added to x. There's your big hint right there. If you want to get rid of a 3 that's being multiplied by x, you have to use the multiplication property of equality. So I'm either going to have to multiply or divide on both sides of this equation to get rid of this 3. Remember, multiplication and division, they're kind of like brothers. They really, or maybe identical twins, I don't know. They're, they're really one and the same thing. Anything you can multiply, you can divide and end up at the same place. Just like in that last example, um, multiplying by one half is exactly the same as dividing by two. Multiplying by one third is exactly the same as dividing by three. So multiplication and division are, are really variations of the same operation. The same thing's true with addition. Addition and subtraction are pretty much the same thing because adding, um, adding, well, let me do a subtracting one first. If I do subtracting five, if I want to subtract five, that's the same as adding negative five. That's the same thing. So if I make C a negative number, it's the same as subtracting. Even though this is called the addition property of equality, you're really using it for adding and subtracting something from both sides of an equation. And even though this is called the multiplication property of equality, you're really using it to multiply or divide on either side of the equation. The second problem is a perfect example. 15 equals 3 plus x. I need to get rid of this 3, so I need to add something to get rid of a 3. Well, I'm going to add a negative 3. That's the same as subtracting 3. Instead of writing plus negative 3, I could have just wrote, I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides, and that's fine. Some people actually even write it underneath here, like this, minus 3. So I minus 3 on the right-hand side, I minus 3 on the left-hand side, and I end up with 12 equals, these 3's cancel out, and I just end up with x, which is obviously the answer 12 plus 3 equals 15. What plus 3 equals 15? 12. Whereas in this one, the 3 is times the x, so I need to use the multiplication property of equality, I could multiply both sides. I'll show it both ways, multiply and divide. What could I multiply by to cancel this 3? Got it? It's 1 third. So if I multiply this side, the right side, by 1 third, I have to multiply the left side by 1 third. Then the 3's will cancel on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, the, uh, the, it comes out nice. The 3 cancels with the 15 as well for 5. That won't always happen, and I end up with 5 equals x. All right, let's look at a couple more here. Oh, I was going to show that with division too, wasn't I? Let's do that. Let me show you that. Let me get rid of just this part, and I'll show you this top equation here. 15 equals 3x. Here we did it with multiplication. What could you divide both sides by to get rid of this 3? And I'm going to use a fraction bar to show divide. Fraction bars mean divide. What would cancel a 3? Well, that would be a 3. So I could divide both sides by 3. These 3's would cancel. And I just work it out now. 15 divided by 3 is 5. Bring down the equal sign. These 3's make 1. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Times x is just x and I end up with the same answer. So you could either multiply, either one of these would work. You could either multiply by one-third or divide by three. But you're still using the multiplication property of equality there. 
All right, let's try a couple more. I'm going to put a couple problems up here and it might be a good idea to pause the video and try a couple and then um, turn it back on and see how you did. Okay, I'm going to mix it up where you have to use adding and subtracting and multiplying and all kinds of stuff here. Let's do negative 6 plus x equals 7 for our first one and then our second one we're gonna do 13 equals 3 X and then for our last one I'm gonna throw a little wrench in and see how you do here let's do 2 thirds X equals 8 alright go ahead pause the video and give those a try and resume when you're ready all right, let's start with the first one here. Remember the goal to get x by itself on one side of the equal sign. We're going to use the multiplication and addition properties of equality to help us solve this. A little phrase that can help you remember those properties goes like this. Uh, what you do to one side or on one side of the equal sign you must do to the other side of the equal sign other side of the equal sign this is a good thing to write down these two these two ideas right here are pretty much the basis of solving equations. What you do on one side of the equal sign, you must do to the other side of the equal sign. And your goal is to get x by itself on one side of the equal sign. Those are your two major concepts that you want to remember as you're solving equations. So let's go up here. We want to get x by itself, and it's on the left-hand side. So we need to get rid of this negative 6. What do I want to do? I got negative 6 plus x. So I'm going to have to use the addition property. I'm going to have to add something to both sides. And I will add a 6, which will cancel out that negative 6. My golden rule, what I do on one side of the equal sign, I have to do on the other. I added 6 to the left. Therefore, I have to add 6 to the right. So let's see what we've got here. 6 plus negative 6 makes 0. That's great. That's what I wanted. That's why I added 6 to make it 0. So I end up with x equals and 7 plus 6 is 13. So that's my first answer. Second problem, 13 equals 3 times x. Where's my variable? My variable's on the right-hand side. There it is, x. Is it by itself? No, this 3 is over here. i got to get rid of this 3. So I need to do something that will get rid of this 3. Since it's 3 times x, I have to use the multiplication property of equality. So I'm either going to multiply or divide. I'm going to go ahead and do the division because it's a little bit easier. So I'm going to divide on both sides. I need to cancel this 3. So what am I going to divide by? I'm going to divide by a 3. 3 on that side and 3 on that side because of my rule. What I do on one side, I have to do on the other. All right, let's see what happens here. Uh-oh, people are starting to freak out now. 13 divided by 3. I can't do that, some people are saying. Just think of it as an improper fraction. 13 over 3, and do the division. How many times does 3 go into 13? Let's see, 3 times 4 would be 12, so there'll be 1 left over, and then you keep the same denominator of 3. 4 and 1 third. On the right-hand side, the 3's cancel to make 1. 3 divided by 3 is 1. And 1 times x is just x, so I get 4 and 1 third equals x. Here's a classic example of a simple looking problem that you really would have a hard time doing in your head. What times 3 is 13? So these techniques of doing something to both sides and getting x by itself can quickly get, to you, get you to that answer. All right, this last one was a little tricky here. I've got 2 thirds times x equals 8. Is x by itself? No. x is on the left-hand side, and it's got a 2 thirds multiplied by it. So I need to get rid of that 2 thirds. Let's multiply on this one. It's 2 thirds times x, so I'm going to use the multiplication property of equality. And I'm going to multiply on both sides. What could I multiply by that I could cancel out a 2 thirds? 
Anybody get this one? If you did, it was very good. What you want to do is take this two-thirds and flip it over. It's called the reciprocal. So if I flip that over to 3 over 2, I will be able to cancel the 2 goes into 2 once and 3 goes into 3 once. So I have just a bunch of 1's. So I just end up with 1x which is x. That's what I wanted. Now hopefully you remembered since we multiplied by 3 over 2 on the left hand side we have to follow our golden rule down here and multiply by 3 over 2 on the right hand side. 8 times 3 over 2. You can put a 1 under the 8 as sort of a placeholder if that helps. You could multiply straight across and get 24 on the top and 2 on the bottom and then reduce that. 24 divided by 2 is 12. Some of you may have seen that you can cancel the 2 and the 8. 2 goes into 2 once and 8 4 times and if you cancel it takes you right to the answer 4 times 3 is 12, 1 times 1 is 1, so you just end up with 12 over 1, which is 12. So there you have it. These are examples of solving one-step equations, and they're called one-step equations because you can solve them in one step by doing something to both sides of the equal sign, and you have x by itself. Practice, practice, practice on these. They're very important as you move forward in algebra.